Hello class, this is section 7.4 and in this video we are going to discuss integrals of Laplace transforms. So if we have an f for which the Laplace transform exists and we have the condition that the ft over t exists and is finite, then we know that the integral of the Laplace transform is given by taking the original function and dividing it by t. So notice that just as the differentiation formula involved multiplication by t, integration involves dividing by t, because differentiation and integration are inverse operations. So this extra condition, uh, the limit of ft over t exists and is finite, you need that to make the left-hand side make sense, because remember that you're taking the integral of ft over t from 0 to infinity, so you need to make sure that ft over t makes sense at 0. If you are instead interested in the inverse Laplace transform, the alternative formula is written down in pink. So this is the formula for the inverse Laplace transform instead, but it isn't too difficult to see that the two formulae, formulae are equivalent. Alright, so let's uh, demonstrate why this is true. And by the definition of the Laplace transform, we know that f of s, f of sigma, sorry, f of sigma is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e minus sigma t, f t, d t. And so if we take the integral from infinity to s, like it is in the formula, so our goal, of course, is to show that this is going to be the Laplace transform of ft over t. And this is equal to integral from infinity to s, that other integral. And we are going to switch the order of integration here. So this is something that we can do in this case because of the assumptions we have on the function f. Remember that f has a Laplace transform, and so we assume that it has a speed limit. It's uh, not faster than an exponential function. And these conditions are enough to ensure that we can switch the order of integration. But you can't always do this for uh, every function. This is something that you have to actually be careful about, but we can do it in this case. So we're going to switch the order of integration. ft, and we're switching the d, at the d sigma and the ds, and the dt, like so. So with the order of integration switched, we can do the inner integral first. So this ft is a constant, we don't have to worry about that. And sigma is the variable we're integrating over, so t is a constant, which means the integral is going to be e minus sigma t over minus t. So ft is a constant, we just leave it here. And this goes from sigma equals s to infinity dt. Taking the limit of this expression at infinity, you see that this is going to be, t is always positive, time, so this, uh, the numerator is going to be 0, and the denominator is going to be infinity, so this expression is clearly going to be 0. That's the uh, limit at infinity, and when we, we can plug in s for the lower limit, this is going to be e minus sigma s over minus s. Oh, sorry, over minus t. Remember that um, we are taking the function sigma, we're integrating over sigma, so this is going to be minus st over minus t, little f of t. This is, this is a very common mistake to make, so watch out for it. We are integrating over sigma, so the t is a constant and we shouldn't like change anything that has a t in it. dt. So this is just going to be equal to e minus st over t ft dt. And we can just rewrite this in this way. And this is, of course, the formula for the Laplace transform of ft over t, 
And we are done. We've shown that the Laplace transform for ft over t is equal to the integral of the Laplace transform from infinity to s. And that's all we needed to do.